Some serious bay leaf you got here, boy. Yeah, yeah, But B. you're a big bay leaf proponent. Yeah, eh? B, bay leaf is B. Bay leaf is B. <laughs> yeah. Big in the game. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of years well, but nothing yeah. before it's time. Nothing right? before it's time. So you're finally here. Yes, sir. And today you're going to make something real nice. What are you making today? All right. So this is something I tend to make pretty often. Mm -hmm. It is my take on a Thai pad krapao or pad grapao, mm -hmm. uh, spelled in different ways. I've never actually been to Thailand, but this is one of my favorite foods. And uh, I checked out videos online, asked Thai people, mm. even talked to chefs in the restaurant, that kind of thing. Right. And it's uh, something that's really healthy, really quick, and the flavor is real. Slap! Ah, <laughs> ah. I remember that was part of the intro for yeah. the quarantine cooking. Yeah, yeah. Take that slapping with yeah, flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Not uh, like Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going there. <laughs> I've stayed off of social media with regards to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I yeah. have so much music stuff going on, I try to stay focused on that. And all them kind of simmy dimmy in the. Yeah, yeah, you're not the time for that. Nah, you're not the time for nah, that. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, why? I mean, I really like Thai cooking as well, right? Yeah. Um, but I know why I like it. Tell me why you like it. Just the flavor profile of Thai cooking brings all of my favorite things together. Mm -hmm. So it has this kind of Indo Chinese vibe. That's two off the list at one time. Bah, bah. Right. my go-to's yeah. and but it also has a similarity to the kind of way that we cook in the I guess what people like to say the global south or mm -hmm. in tropical areas you know what I mean places close to the equator yeah hot people hot food don't know yeah you know I mean yeah yeah I see some chilies and thing up in it today yeah real spicy thing now yeah. the reason why I like this is because it's so healthy mm -hmm. um, very low carb the meal itself yeah and um, it's spicy man it's like you know it's like a, a dance party yeah. in your mouth yeah, <laughs> all right, looking forward to that. All right, so what are you going to do first? All right, cool. So basically, it calls for, the traditional method calls for like minced chicken, right? You can use any protein, minced chicken, minced pork, probably substituted with something vegetarian or vegan even. But the traditional method calls for minced chicken. Right. Now, the minced chicken I like to use is my own cut up thighs because there's a bigger fat content, there's, a, there's more flavor in it right. and it don't dry out so quick now. So I'm going right. to cut up this thigh, right. these thighs here yeah. and then we're going to start, you know, um, we're going to brown that and flavor that, do it quickly yeah. and then do everything, take that out, yeah. then do everything separate and it's a quick dish to put together. All right, nice, nice, yeah, nice. Well, get into it, get into it. But on. all right, cool. Yeah. I'm going to cut this up here. Where's that, boy? As, as soon as we start the recorder, no? yeah, where's that? Where's that? Some kind of announcement. But go ahead, go ahead. That's all right. All that's part of it. All that's part of it. The, the whole Mike Man situation is yeah. such an integral part of the culture. Of the culture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost a dying art, if, if you will. Like yeah. Imtiaz Ali and all those people that were featured on Mikel's documentary, Mikel, Mikel Galofre's Ooh, documentary. Ooh, she's taking me back. You're taking right? me back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a death announcement. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And all them things, marriage announcement and You know when I was small, I thought it was a man that used to be um, like literally saying things over and over. I thought so too. Yeah, and I then I realized it's a recording. Yeah, they yeah. did the job. But you know, one thing I noticed mm. is that, um, what is it? Oh, old battery buy? Or is it, um, um, yeah, scrap iron. Yeah, buying selling, scrap iron, buying, old battery buy. Right, right, yeah, right. right. Yeah, buying yeah. scrap iron, old battery buy. Yeah. They changed the recording of that recently. Okay. And it was, it just didn't feel right. And they, um, you want the old thing, you yeah, want yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. authentic thing, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's when traditionalism kind of works yeah, best. Yeah. You know, you can't Some, mess up with Yeah, things some things you gotta leave as is. Yeah. Something, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't mess with the culture. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things in the neighborhood and then things in, in the villages and in your cities and things like that, certain things are mainstays. And definitely those, those my people are yeah. mainstays, in my opinion. Yeah. The sound, the tapestry of sound of your. Home base, you know? Indeed, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's the sounds of home. Yeah. Like um, in the morning, I, I was usually here, not usually, always in the morning here in this area. Yeah. I was always here the Azan. Azan, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and to me, like, if I do hear that, then 
it's like I, I'm not in sour. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yo, like to me, I um, I just think about it when you hear these things, and uh, just. It's things you can't hear anywhere else in the world. Yeah. The combination yeah. of sounds. Yeah. You know, sound is just a massive thing for me. I'm just fixated on sound in all, all regards, you know? Right. And that, those are like the anchoring elements now. But right. they're so uncommon because you don't really get that anywhere else, you know? Yeah. Nowhere else in this world. So for those who don't know, you are a musician. Yes, I'm a musician, singer, songwriter, producer. Right. And um, I guess now a, a recording artist. Yeah, man. What do you think it is um, about music and food that is just, I don't know, or what does make it gravitate to those both um, disciplines? They're so linked to the senses. Right. So to me, you know, food, music, sports, and other interdisciplinary arts. Yes. You know, I mean, they, yeah. they just, um, they resound with me and, and, and everybody because it's a common denominator, common languages, right? right. They're the colorful languages. Um, and also, you know, I see cooking and I love to cook whenever I get the chance. Right. It's a way to control what you eat as well in a healthy way, mm -hmm. which is a big thing. But also, it's almost like a composition of a song. You know what I mean? Right. Putting these things together, these colors, these colors with these textures and then arranging it, you know? Nice. Whether it's a quick thing, yeah. you know, fast and quick mm -hmm. and high heat or low and slow. Yeah. They're completely different types of arrangements. And I really, really love that. And it also gives me a chance to take a break from actually working right. on a record with our mixing, arranging, writing, singing, whatever it is. Mm. And then this is a palate cleanser to me. Right. But with my uh, musically obsessive mind, I will always like parallel it with what I'm actually doing in the music and it yeah. helps me organize a lot better because I could be yeah. here, there, <laughs> yeah. uh, everywhere. Right. And this right. really helps me ground, ground organize. Yeah. yeah, man. And put everything in a nice, beautiful, colorful arrangement and you are what you eat. I Can tell me? people that, I, I tell the people that, I tell the people um, even, even further to that, food mm -hmm. is medicine. Exactly. Yeah. That's and a people, big thing people, for me. Are people not understanding that, you know, it, yeah. it, it, what you put into your body is, is, is literally before you reach by a doctor to get, to take a pill. Yeah. These, this is where you're taking in every day into your body, so you know. Yeah, I believe that bro. And yeah. you know, prevention is always better than the cure when it comes to this. And you know, we're from Trinidad and Tobago and we have like, Diets with high amounts of sugar, you know, for obvious re reasons in our colonial past. Um, also, the types of foods that we um, we have in our uh, history, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they're super high flavored, and you know, what an amazing thing! Our cuisine is so so incredibly dynamic and flavorful. Yeah. But we just go overboard with certain things now. And there's yeah. ways I think I really think there's ways that we can adjust the way that we eat mm -hmm. while still. Eating the things that we love, you know Definitely. what I mean? We live in 2022, yeah, after all, come on, yeah. we, we evolve in. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, things, I mean, yes, we love the tradition, but we had to, um, you know, at least move forward, you know? Yeah, progressivize the progressive. tradition, you know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me about your approach to this EP. What What is this EP about? All right. Well, so, now that I've roughly minced this <laughs> chicken thigh here, yeah. Um, yeah, so I have a new EP out. It's called the Attraction EP. Mm -hmm. um, it's simply my musings on love and attraction. Mm -hmm. And um, delivered in a very simple format, but it's multi-genre right. at first glance. Mm -hmm. To me, it's all part of the same thing because it's all part of me. Right. My thoughts, my feelings yeah. on the stages of love and attraction right. in relationships. Right. And um, I so, decided... So sorry, it's a very personal project. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, after being a producer for the better part of two decades, right. um, since I was really, really young, mm -hmm. you know, I'd always want to be a singing artist. I always right. wanted to be a singing artist. And um, this is something that I wanted to do first before anything else. Mm -hmm. But I realized at some point I had to focus. Right. And I focused on my career as a producer. And now mm -hmm. I'm at a place where I can produce myself as I would any other artist. So that's what I'm doing. Right. How, how challenging is it to produce yourself? You know what? For me, the reason why I've taken my time is because now I feel as though the flow is a lot easier okay. than it actually is working with anybody else. And for me, mm -hmm. the, the, the flow in this regard is simply from, you know, if you're thinking of from, in a metaphysical sense or a physiological sense, straight from your head, directly either into the keyboard or straight from your head into your mouth. It's not a, not a big distance. Right. It, it takes out some of the um, necessary articulation right. 
that you need to have in communication with somebody outside of yourself. So with yeah. me communicating with myself, me yeah. producing myself, mm. at times it could be a very uh, incessant uh, process because I'm like going over and over and over and over the lines. Yeah. But again, practice makes perfect. You know, learning the course as I go, especially with regards to vocals. And I'd always been a singer. Right. And it's a big part of my pr production approach. Right. And writing approach, no matter who I'm working with. But now I get to do it completely myself. So having fun with it, man. Nice, nice. Yeah, man. Nice. Very good, very good. Badang. So this, yeah, this is done, right? Yeah, that's done. All right. All right. So next, next step. Badang. All right. Um, right, yeah, it's roughly done. And I will wash my hands. Yeah. Cross contamination thing. <laughs> now, this soy sauce process, this is a little bit of a deviation from the, the traditional thing because this is what they do in, in, uh, in um, Cantonese cooking. And my parents lived in China for a while. My dad was a Trinidad ambassador out there. So I went out there and I, I learned some techniques from the cook in the, in the official residence. Right. So one of them is putting the oil in, super hot. Now we've seen the smoke come up. Put the oil in and we're gonna take the soy sauce and in order to color the meat, we're going to put the so soy sauce directly into the oil. But I'm also gonna put some chili powder right before that. And you can't put this in for too long. This is for the color effect, right? right. And we're putting this into the oil. It bathes the oil in a red. Right. So I'm doing that quickly, yeah. throwing in the soy quickly, and then yeah. bang, chicken go in. Chicken. And just getting bathed in this color. Now, you, you can season this simply with uh, salt and pepper, but this really kind of is going to infuse it a lot. And the yeah. salt and pepper, the salt and the, 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 the salty elements will be added throughout the dish. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. Cool. So this is this is why I need this cover because otherwise I will just be riddled with red burn marks <laughs> oh, sure. yeah right yeah. so let me see if we can try to avoid that yeah let me, let me look at that on, on all right so one. this is going to go in super quick right yeah, yeah. chili oil chili is going to go in there it's going to become chili oil you're going to put this in here and it's going to start to oh yeah 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 still got a little burn oh i didn't get the flambe effect <laughs> That'll be nice yeah you got the flames that's all right this yeah. is good so you see it starts to get colorful already and we're going to eliminate this splutter. Yeah, nice. Right. I'm going to throw a little bit of salt in one time. Salting the stages. A little bit. We're going to add more later. Right. I don't start to sweat, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice part it. If you're sweating, yeah. you know, we're doing, right? Right. Tell me about your experience as a percussionist? So for me, man, like I almost had no choice because um, I'm the son of my father right. and my mother. Yeah. My father in particular was a drummer before he became an ambassador right. and, a, and a foreign service officer for this country for close to 50 years. Oh. And, uh, you know, one of our most celebrated diplomats in the Caribbean. But before that, you know, he came from Faizabad right. in South Trinidad. And He was always a musician, came from a very musical family. His mother used to beat drum in wedding and sing and cook as well too, all part of the same nice. thing, right? Inclination. Nice. Um, but he got a scholarship to go to India to play tabla. And he had played with some of the Indian singers that came down to Trinidad in the, the, the late 60s and, and early 70s and that kind of thing. Right. Um, but his mother said, son, I ain't really sure if music will make a good career for you. And you're getting the chance to go to India Evaluate it and you know for him that was his his path. He, he changed his major as soon as he got there right. So political science and history, okay. but was always an incredible musician He changed his major in college and long story short uh, He met my mother in India mm -hmm. and they got together and so Fast forward many many years me being born on a foreign posting in Canada You know I had no choice my earliest pictures and memories are with me in the music room We've always had a music room in our house um, you know, just by osmosis, right? Learning how to just be part of music, and you know, music to me is a concept that's bigger than just the the human side, right? Uh, and it's a hard thing to explain, but sometimes you know these things just come to you. And so for me, the, where I'm at right now is yeah. it's a place where songs kind of just come to me, and I have to accept it, yeah, and make sure and be a receptacle and a vessel for the song to exist. I, I understand that fully. All right, so I'm gonna. Before we go on day, yeah, I'm a distractible fella. <laughs> so let me, let me, yeah, let me transfer yeah. this. Yeah. So this is brown that has some color, and I'm gonna transfer this into another container. I'm gonna put the um, onions, yeah. Onions. yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's start to get them aromatics. 
And it, you still have the drippings from the chicken in there. So nice that's flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Performing as a percussionist, um, performing as a DJ, producing for other artists, but now you being on stage and having to perform these pieces, you know, the, 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 that that so personal to you. Yeah. Um, where's the where's the process? Where's the, the thought process? And where's and not just that, but where's your expectation when you hit a stage and you, you had to perform? Yeah, those are good questions, man. Uh, for me. I've taken it step by step, mm -hmm. as it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Mm -hmm. The main thing for me, as I would in my maybe even advice, from purely a musical perspective, is to make sure the fundamentals are good, first of all. Make sure I'm singing on key, make sure I'm holding the mic properly, right. but also, as it is with any stage performance, to enjoy yourself and do what you're there to do. Right. So for me, I feel so at home on the stage, so this is a chance for me to live those moments, but and in an even more personal way, as you say. So I, I go up there, man, and I feel so, so energized right. by the energy in front of me from yeah. the crowd, and um, I'm just looking forward to more and more minds, ears, and eyes to transmit this energy into and get it back. Because for me, if they're feeling it, yeah. I will feel it even more, tenfold, yeah. hundredfold, yeah. thousandfold. Yeah. yeah. So I'll put some garlic in there. Because you know garlic does bun quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah, 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 yeah. My father from Faisabad, so I have a, I have a, this serious man hand. <laughs> <laughs> Think through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right? And we have afraid garlic, you know that, right? No, no, yeah. Just, Just like you, you never have too much garlic. Nah, no. never have too much garlic, right? So we have um some lemongrass from my terrace garden and some galanga that Badawi gave me. Galanga is like key and essential in a lot of Thai cooking. And it's not very available all the time, so whoever have it, you know, treasure that, yeah. cherish that. We got galanga and lemongrass, that's the real aromatics of this dish, you know? Yeah. The subtlety comes from that. Those complexities of flavors really come from that, that vibe. And of course ginger, we like the ginger bowl. Yeah, yeah. And then sticks. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I didn't need ginger. Nah, at all, at all, at all. Cool. Yeah. Nice. While I put this chili in here before things burn, yeah. we're making it nice and spicy. Butter. So before the pandemic, I had about almost a year's time in immersion, in, in immersion, immersing myself into this kind of writing and recording process, right. self-producing. Right. But the pandemic happened. Yeah. And as it did with a lot of people that afforded me the chance to devote some energy to something that I didn't have the time to devote to before. Right. And yeah, I really went to it hard, man. I, I pretty much completed about 45 songs. Wow. And there's more, un, there's more unfinished ones as well, too. So I have an album. That album is coming out in September. I think this is going to air before then. Yeah. And that follows up the EP. So the EP was written, mm -hmm. recorded, produced, and done yeah. after the album. Oh, okay. So the, okay. In, okay. in an effort to make some music that's not as deep underwater yeah. and not as mood. I, like the, the album itself is mm -hmm. something that I really hold very, very personal. Right. Um, and it's, you know, my true thoughts in, a, in, a, in, a, in an immersed way as possible. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I wanted to lead up to that. So I, I put out the Soka singles. I had the Soka singles out for the carnival season. I right. dropped these uh, string beans in here. You could use Bodhi if you want. Bang. Um, so yeah, I had those songs out for the carnival season, three songs, and that was the intention. Start there, in my wheelhouse, in my world, in my pool that I'm in already, that I've been in for some time, been producing soca music for so long. Yeah. So now that is definitely going to be a part of the career going forward, singing soca tunes in between. Yeah. And having fun with that. Right. It's fun music, right? Yeah. And um, then it leads up to the more, I guess, um, artistic and moody stuff. So that's the trajectory. Right. And I'm just, you know, making sure that I immerse myself in it as much as possible. It may seem like a late bloomer type of thing, mm. but for me, you know. There's no such thing as late bloomer. I, you know, it, yeah, feels, yeah, yeah. it feels right. The timing yeah, feels yeah, correct yeah, now yeah. to be able to do this, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you started the process before the pandemic. Yeah. How did the pandemic affect the subject material for the album? It's interesting because, you know, it gives you the time and space to think about really what you're doing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it could be very obsessive, yeah. but um, 
the pandemic really provided that space and time. You know, yeah. more than anything else, you know, it's a very trite and cliche way to say it. Mm. But it did. It gave me the chance to focus on it. Uh, you know, the, the songs are really kind of deep and metaphysical in a sense. Yeah. I'll, I'll let the listeners be the judge of that, of course. Yeah. But for me, you know, they're, they're things that more than give me goosebumps and make me cry and thing and all them kind of thing. You know, right. it's a very, what one might say is a vulnerable yeah. uh, body of work. Yeah. But I'm leading up to that. So I'm starting a little more lighthearted. Right. And then I lead up to this stuff. And you know, after that, I'm going to have fun with it. I'm going to do a rock album. Okay. I'm going to do all these different types of things. And you know, I'm lucky to have a great team behind me at the moment and uh, people that I trust. Yeah. And just move it forward in that way so I can go about the business of creating. Yeah. You know? Well, and um, I mean, Given the fact that you said that the subject material one is personal, yeah, um, and that the pandemic did um, uh, play some role in affecting the subject material, yeah, um, and I know this rings true for a lot of people. I, 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 I might go as far as to say for everyone, yeah, um, the pandemic has forced us in some ways to really revisit or rethink how we view our interpersonal relationships and not yes. just and not just yeah. romantic or whatever but you yes. know, friends and family and that kind of thing absolutely did did you did you feel any kind of compulsion to bring whatever you were going through i guess during the pandemic into the music and bring that out into it yeah you said it best absolutely that's exactly what i did right you know and it, it's a chance i was yearning for this solitude Mm -hmm. And in the life that I have, to be honest, I, I move around so much. It's a kind of frenetic music life that, you know, is involved in stages and clubs and flights yeah. and yeah. these type of things. A lot of movement. Mm -hmm. I was yearning for the solitude. I didn't know if I'd be able to get it. We all got it. And right. I, partic in particular, was home alone for most of that. Right. And I did the quarantine cookery, cookery series with you yeah. Yeah. Um, during that period. Let me, let me throw back the chicken into the rest of the ingredients. Everything nice and crispy, spicy. Woo! Nice. nice. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, nice. small, yeah, small, yeah, yeah, small thing, yeah. Right, cool. <laughs> Looks great. Let me put some. This is to yummy it up a bit. Now, to be more healthy, you can use stevia or a natural sugar replacement. Even something low glycemic like um, agave or honey or something like that. We're using brown sugar. We're not half. Oh, honey, you know, if you want it, honey. We're not half stepping. It's all right. All right. We're gonna go full <laughs> the full yumminess all right. and put some brown sugar in there, right? Because Thai food, I find Thai food is so balanced in its flavors, right? The the sweet, the sour, the hot, the bitter, yeah. so the astringent, all that stuff. And so I put that in there, and I'm going to now put a little bit of coconut milk. This is another deviation from the, um, the Thai method of Pad Krapao, but I find it makes it so much more sumptuous and luxurious without um, making it unhealthy. Right. And then this, so I have apple cider vinegar here, and I'm a massive proponent of ACV. And Besides its obvious health benefits, which you can look up, I have it in the morning and night, every day with water, it's amazing for the body. And uh, it also is a substitute for fish sauce because it brings the omami that the fish sauce would bring. I'm allergic to fish. I can't have anything else from the sea or from the water, but I can't have fish. So this will bring that authentic kind of more umami flavor, right? And depending on your threshold, you could throw. I throw in it. Mm, this is pretty much done, eh? This is smelling good, looking right. good. Okay, this is <coughs> yo, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's spicy too. Yeah. And then just to finish this off, we're gonna, I'm just gonna tear some of these and throw it in. Nice. I think, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Yeah. How do I take off this fight? I just go all the yeah, all the way off. Nice. Cool. And yeah, uh, it's on the menu of a lot of Thai restaurants. You might find basil stir fry or basil stir fry. That's what this is. If it's a really authentic restaurant, you'll find, find Pad Grapao or Pad Krapao, but it calls for quite a bit of basil or basil, depending on where you are. I spend a lot of time in England and America, so as you can tell, my accent is, yeah. is different. <laughs> it's an amalgamation. Yeah, different is, 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 is the way to put it, but you know what? It, it kind of um, is a reflection of the cooking, is a reflection of the music. Yeah, it's you, you yeah, know? That's yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a, it's a, something that, you know, when I was younger, you know, you go to schools in, a, in different countries and these kind of things and you wonder, okay, my identi identity is a really interesting thing. For me, you know, <clears throat> the more time you actually spend with yourself and paying attention to your actual self and not trying to be like anything that you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. in my opinion, mm -hmm. the more you realize what you actually are. And so for me, I am all of these accents. Right. You know, and yeah. um, 
done are the days of apologizing for it or wondering why. Right. You know? Yeah. This, this is who you are. Absolutely, man. Nice. nice. So I put in plenty um, basil in it, right? Yeah. That's this is kind of like the Thai holy basil. You can get this in Trinidad. Yeah. You know? It's throwing things in. If I have a little one-two stock, it's no scene. You know? And you don't actually have to cook this in the dish. You just throw it in afterwards. Fresh. You yeah. Know? Nice. Tear it like a grandma. Yeah. Like, yeah. A, like a, you know, a nanny yeah. or something. Or a nonna. And, um, right, we'll save these flowers for the garnish. For the yeah? garnish. Yeah. Nice. Toss it up. Wash, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bada. Um, I recently had a launch event for this EP in Trinidad. Um, a, <coughs> a small event that me and my team, Big Up Simon, um, did at the Dalai Lama in One Woodbrook Place, but there are going to be a series of performances very soon before I leave. I head back out mm. for tour to Europe with Just Now and also to finally start singing this material very shortly after it's released okay. um, internationally. So um, I will let everybody know, but basically get onto my social media, Keshav Trinidad at, on every platform, K-E-S-H-A-V Trinidad on all platforms. And yeah, just keep in tune to what I'm doing. I started a new YouTube channel and check out my EP. It's a real interesting thing. I'll put the links to everything there. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you, thank you. And hey, we eating Thai food today. Listen, listen, already, you know, already. We ain't skimping, we ain't skimping on the flavors. Nah, 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 let me get, let me get close up into that. Thing. I ain't eat a food kitchen, you know, I can't really, I can't half step. Nah, can't. this is not no half stepping. This is no, no, full thing. Not no half assing. Nah. Badang. Look at this. Let me see, let me yeah, see what yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. Let me see what go on. Yeah, boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. But then, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the chicken thighs, soft, you know, moist, Trick. flavorful. Better you're, than the breast. The you're breast right, you're right. The breast, right. breast will not dry out. Mm -hmm. Nah, boy. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. I'm making this. <laughs> mm -mm. But, um, so right now I have the Attraction EP out. It's available on all platforms on my label, Heavy Drums, for everything that's released that is not just now. And you can find me on every platform as Keshav Trinidad, K-E-S-H-A-V, Trinidad, Instagram, Facebook, everything. And um, stay tuned for videos coming out as well. I've got an album coming out in September. Thank you very much. Eat your food. I love you. Bada. You say I got the thing you want, but if I told you you're exactly what I need, baby, it's not a typical love. Yeah. Just push it by me And every little touch for sure Brings the both of us closer, you see They fit me just like a glove Yeah, I'm telling you what I see I'm taking the time to pay attention To look at the signs and not to mention